On January 25th, the U.S. House of Representatives introduced the America Competes Act of 2022, a bill to address competition with Beijing and to improve the stability of the U.S. supply chain. A key part of the act is the creation of a chip fund, which would provide $52 billion to encourage U.S. private sector investment in semiconductor production, among other things, to alleviate global chip shortages. And authorize $45 billion to improve the U.S. supply chain, strengthening manufacturing, preventing shortages of critical items, and ensure that more of these products are made in the United States. Since the second half of 2020, the global supply of electronic chips has been experiencing severe shortages, hitting many manufacturing industries such as automobiles, telecommunications, and home appliances, and posing a serious threat to the economic recovery of countries. The automobile manufacturing industry is the most affected by this shortage, according to a recent analysis by the U.S. Automotive News. The shortage of chip supply will affect four million vehicles worldwide in 2022. Experts said that, coupled with the impact of the epidemic, the global delay in new car deliveries is expected to continue until 2023. For example, on January 18th, Japan's Toyota announced that it would suspend production at 19 production lines at 11 plants in Japan in February this year, due to a shortage of chips. By February 2022, new vehicle production is estimated at 700,000 units, a decrease of 150,000 units from the expected level. In addition to the impact of the epidemic on chip supply, a major reason for the shortage of chips is the surge in demand. For example, 5G cell phones require more chips than 4G cell phones. On average, 4G cell phones need three to six radio PA chips to control cell phone signals, while 5G cell phones need up to 16 chips to get better signals. After vehicles become intelligent and internet-enabled, a new energy vehicle demands more than 1,000 chips on average, compared to the less than 100 chips per vehicle for traditional fuel vehicles. In addition, the U.S.-China technology dispute has led many Chinese companies to hoard chips in recent years, which is another important reason for the global chip shortage. Huawei has been stockpiling key chips since the end of 2018, after the arrest of its chief financial officer Meng Wanzhou in Canada. September 15, 2020, is the date when the U.S. ban on Huawei officially took effect. Before the ban, TSMC had been rushing to work on Kirin chips for Huawei 24 hours per day, and the production capacity was far exceeded by large numbers of orders. At that time, there were media reports that Huawei had purchased chips from Taiwan worth perhaps 100 billion U.S. dollars, and chartered a flight to get them back from Taiwan. Many netizens commented that this plane may be the most valuable flight in history. Other Chinese phone makers, such as Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo, are also increasing their chip purchases to capture the market vacated by Huawei, switching inventory from quarterly to annually. This wave of snapping up chips has also led to a continuous rise in the volumes of chips imported into China. According to Chinese customs data, China imported 417.5 billion chips in 2018. In 2019, imports reached 445.1 billion chips, and in 2020, imports increased by another 20 percent, bringing the imports to a record high of 543.5 billion chips and 350 billion dollars in value. According to the report, Electronic Information and Manufacturing Operation from January to November 2021. Released at the end of last year by China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, China imported 582.22 billion chips in the first 11 months of 2021, an increase of 19.3 percent over the same period as of previous year, with a value of about 389.06 billion U.S. dollars. The estimated value for full-year 2021 chip imports will reach a new high of over 400 billion U.S. dollars. The strong demand and shortage of chips has spurred the global semiconductor industry to expand production capacity, according to a report released by the Semiconductor Industry Association in October of last year. The global semiconductor industry has seen record capital expenditures in the past two years, which is estimated to reach nearly $150 billion in 2021 and more than $150 billion in 2022. 
while annual capital expenditures for the global semiconductor industry has never exceeded $115 billion until 2021. According to the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association, 85 chip factories are expected to be built by 2024, including 25 8-inch factories and 60 12-inch factories. By that time, global 8-inch chip capacity will increase by nearly 20%, and 12-inch chip capacity will increase by nearly 50%. However, it will take at least two to three years for these factories to come online, and according to a survey released by the U.S. Department of Commerce on January 25th, U.S. chip demand in 2021 will be about 17% higher than in 2019. The survey also shows that the U.S. chip supply chain is very fragile, as the median inventory of key chips has dropped from being able to support 40 days in 2019 to less than 5 days in 2021. The U.S. Department of Commerce's survey results also highlight the urgency of revitalizing domestic semiconductor production in the United States. The semiconductor industry has become a key battleground in the U.S.-China confrontation. In fact, as early as last June, the U.S. Senate passed the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, a comprehensive counterweight to the Chinese Communist Party, authorizing approximately $250 billion to strengthen U.S. technology with $54 billion earmarked to enhance the production of semiconductors, chips, and telecommunications equipment. At the same time, the U.S. government is urging manufacturers to bring semiconductor chip production back to the United States. Intel announced on January 21st that it will invest up to $100 billion to build what could be the world's largest chip manufacturing park in Ohio, including eight factories. The initial $20 billion investment will begin construction by the end of this year, with production expected to begin in 2025. Prior to that, in September last year, Intel also announced that it would spend $20 billion to build two chip factories in Arizona. In addition, at the urging of the U.S., TSMC announced in May last year that it would invest $12 billion to build a factory in Phoenix, Arizona, to produce 20,000 5 nanometer advanced process chips per month. Samsung Electronics also announced in November last year that it would invest $17 billion to build a factory in Texas. As a former world factory, chips are China's largest import product, especially the high-end chips needed for cell phones and various smart devices, which often require advanced process support below 10 nanometers, and are monopolized by several companies such as TSMC and Samsung. According to Xi Jinping, it is unacceptable that such an important segment is still being controlled by other countries. This is why independently manufactured chips is the core project of Made in China 2025. According to the plan, when the project was proposed in 2015, China's chip localization rate should reach 40% by 2020 and 70% by 2025. Let's see what the actual completion rate is. By the end of 2021, the localization rate of China's semiconductor products was only 19%, of which more than half was done by foreign companies such as TSMC and Micron. However, this project had promoted a mass chip production movement since 2018. In April 2019, Huawei made a high-profile announcement that it was setting up a high-tech VC, Hubble Investment, to defend itself from U.S. crackdowns. According to the Chinese media, Hubble Investment has made 65 investments in 64 companies in three years, investing in an average of three companies a month. The amount of investment ranges from as little as several hundred thousand RMB to hundreds of millions of RMB. This kind of investment approach is no more than a drop in the bucket for the semiconductor industry, which is widely regarded as a money black hole. Therefore, Huawei's investment approach looks more like an advertising campaign and will not help to change the fate of Huawei's consumer electronic products from disappearing from the market. There is also the Qinghua Uni Group, which announced a bankruptcy restructuring in July last year due to its inability to repay its huge debts. Its chairman, Zhao Weiguo, has been called the chip maniac by mainland Chinese media. In a media interview in 2015, he said that the company planned to invest 300 billion RMB in the next five years to become the world's third largest chip manufacturer. He has also made grand promises to buy a TSMC, merge with MediaTek, and challenge Qualcomm.
but of course, none of them came true in the end. The Tsinghua Uni Group, which was once thought to carry the dream of China's chip independence, seems to be just that, a dream. The actors in this drama are more than just Tsinghua Uni Group and Huawei. The main force are the local governments. A large number of industrial funds have been established in the name of domestic chips, and dozens of chip industrial parks have appeared. They poached a few teams from Taiwan semiconductor companies, or brought in a few Chinese expatriate employees from Micron, ASML, Invista, etc., compiled a nice PowerPoint, and received large amounts of investment without even having to produce a single product. For example, Wuhan Hongxin and Jinan Quanxin, which claimed to have invested more than 100 billion RMB, did not produce a single chip and finally declared bankruptcy and restructuring, leaving a mess for the local governments. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that at least six new large-scale chip manufacturing projects in China have ended in failure in the past three years, with at least $2.3 billion invested in them, mostly by the government. However, some projects never produced even a single chip because local officials underestimated the difficulty and cost of manufacturing high-end advanced process chips. The Chinese government is not good at doing its job, but it is excellent at bragging and diverting attention. From time to time, big news like Blank University has developed quantum chip technology without photolithography, successfully breaking the blockade of American imperialism, or the new discovery that two 14 nanometer chips stacked together have the same effect as 7 nanometer, which is so anti intellectual that it's laughable but is hailed by blind patriots. We know the two characteristics of the semiconductor industry. One is the huge and continuous capital investment, and the other is the ever-advancing technological competition. For example, TSMC, which is recognized as the leader of chip manufacturers, launched the 7 nanometer advanced process in 2018, 5 nanometers in 2020, and will launch 3 nanometer advanced process in 2022. TSMC's capital expenditures reached 30.4 billion US dollars in 2021 and will reach 40 to 44 billion US dollars in 2022, of which 70 to 80 percent will be spent on advanced processes, including 2, 3, 5, and 7 nanometers. To ensure its leading position in the industry, TSMC spends 3 billion US dollars annually on research and development. On the contrary, the Chinese communist authorities either offer a market for technology approach to attract foreign companies to enter China, or simply steal or hack technology, including poaching its engineers at high prices and then taking their technical data or secrets. This approach is also being resisted by an increasing number of foreign high-tech companies that are pulling out of China. For example, Micron Technology, a major US memory chip maker, confirms to Reuters on January 26 that it plans to move a design unit in Shanghai by the end of this year. Industry sources said that in recent years, the company has been poached by Chinese competitors for many technical talents. In 2018, the U.S. Department of Commerce also accused Taiwan's United Microelectronics Corporation and China's Fujian Jinhua Integrated Circuits Corporation of conspiring to steal Micron's trade secrets. Another important factor to consider is that U.S. sanctions against Chinese technology companies have limited access to high-end technology and key raw materials and equipment for Chinese semiconductor companies. For example, the U.S. controls the export of ASML's lithography machines to China, a key equipment for chip manufacturing, and the export of key raw materials such as Japanese photoresist, making it impossible for Chinese manufacturers such as SMIC to produce high-end chips. Thus, the winner of this Sino-US chip war seems to already be apparent even in the beginning stages.